There are a lot of things uh, that are different about this week's show, Stock Nerds and Market Lovers. Welcome uh, to my mom's basement where I am being interrogated. Um, <laughs> we, can, we, we can discuss that. Uh, today was incredibly painful. I feel awful for the fellas. I, I made them sit. It's my fault. I didn't prepare technologically for today's show. So they've been sitting for 45 minutes in the, in the pit. There's been a rain delay in the F1 race. And uh, they've been sitting there uh, waiting um, patiently. And I, I, I feel awful about it. My energy is kind of zapped. I've been drinking coffee. I've been drinking water. In the meantime, trying to keep my energy up for today's show. And then Don. And then Don shows me this homemade contraption that he's made for his newfound favorite energy drink. And can you stand Don, can uh, show, show the whole contraption. I think it's a Yeti cup. It's a traditional. Well, it, it, it starts with a, a Celsius can. Right. And then you just put any old uh, half koozie in it. And then no. you put the half, half koozie hold on, half, inside the half Yeti koozie, cooler. <laughs> half and koozie, koozie looks through. like. I was well. It looks like someone who like like you're going to make shorts out of cut off jeans. Half koozie, well, or you rip the shoulders off your shirt. They, it's it's a beach, man. It's the beach. <laughs> it's the so beach. It's the beach. Beat up after a what, while. What, what's cut off some that koozies? You have? Is, that's just a normal Yeti cup. It's a the Yeti cool uh, colster. They call them. Colster. Yeah, okay. I have that. The Yeti colster. colster. So, so Don Don. Put splashes that on the screen, and then it made me wonder. Like, I wanted to talk about ticks and the tick fade trade. Stockton's Mark Lovers is a big show. Uh, I've got a tick fade trade to show you. I want to talk about don't get left holding the bag, and I believe you're going to be left holding the bag here in the coming days and weeks. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, stocks to avoid. Um, it's the first time I can see. Well, the if you're going to talk show. about that, then Timmy Bear's got to make an appearance, oh, and you can God. see him. It's not. Live. It's not. <laughs> it's not bearish. It's not bearish. It's a heads up. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's different than it's the first only time I a bear the talks joke. about bear. <laughs> only a bear talks about we're going lower when we're at all highs. I didn't say we're going, going lower. Point. I I didn't I didn't say we're going lower. Uh, roll that back, but, Zach. Roll that back, Zach, because it, it was enough to make I me. Said you're going to be left bearing. holding the bag in a in a. He doesn't come out. I'm I'm, I'm, at, I'm concerned every that you time. Keep, I'm concerned that you keep a bear of my uh, of my liking uh, somehow somewhere oh, near your be, waist that you just pull concerned. out. Every... Don't be concerned. <laughs> then it's um, normal behavior. <laughs> Thank you, Alex, for laughing at that joke. Much appreciated. Um, and then let's look at MS, MNST. So I I wasn't going to look at Monster until I think Monster. Can someone do the quick research if you don't remember? Monster, I believe was the biggest gaining stock of like the last decade, maybe the last 15, 16 years. Can someone verify? It's a tremendous Hanson Natural. You see. It used to be Hanson Natural. Yeah, Hanson Natural, right. And um, I'm on a monthly chart. So you're going back to 02 when they must have split. Split adjusted, you're in the less than a dollar range. And now you're trading around $90. So that's uh, it's a pretty good return on your money right there, right? And uh, but I asked the fellas, because I, I do all of you drink C-E-L-H, which is Celsius, I got, which is the I just, new... Uh, I just grabbed one, and I'm putting it in my Yeti cup like Don. <laughs> uh, you you have have uh, see, it's going to rattle around if you don't get the, the intermediate... <laughs> I, need uh, get, I don't have the koozie. Oh, yeah. I don't have a koozie. Look at that. <laughs> see what's going to happen? You're going to go to lift it up, and it's going to fall out the bottom I know. of the chair. You're did, did you just go lift it up? Like... are just going to go to hell. Did you just do lift it up I, like I, you were going to the gun show? Like you, you did lift it up like this. I, I feel like I saw that. Like you did lift it. Yeah, <laughs> I saw. I thought that's what Don just did. I I looked at like you're gonna lift it up and then. Uh, what is in uh, CELH that makes it better than MS, MNST? Why is it a Why is it a phenomenon? You can see the monthly chart of uh, of this stock here. Why is it such a phenomenon? Can someone give that to me? Yeah, yeah, I can. So uh, remember they... in uh, okay, go ahead. Do you yeah. want to let me? Uh, you remember in uh, in uh, Ron Burgundy when the Sex Panther cologne had real bits of panther, so you know it's good, and sixty percent of the time it works every time. That's what Celsius is. It has real bits of cells in it, and they flavor the cells, and it it will and load it up with caffeine, so everybody smiles when you're drinking a Celsius. <laughs> I was looking for something different because if it's this, if this, if it's this, 
periods, not generation, but if it's this period's monster, you're going to want to own it. Like, I, I don't, yeah, I don't, why is that, it such a cult phenomenon? The, is it a cult phenomenon? Because it, because it says promotes weight loss on it and the other ones don't. They have, it really? so they have some, yeah. let me give you some actual research, research here. I'd appreciate so they, that because that, that, <laughs> Alex, they, the uh, Greek, thank you. Has some, they have some peer reviewed sure. literature that says that it helps with performance. They actually backed it up. Um, they claim to be more all natural, no artificial flavors, et cetera. Um, Essential so you energy see on that, accelerates metabolism, yeah. burns body burns fat. That's all you body. need. So you well, see those, a, you see those what it is. hashtags like on next to it? So companies are allowed to make health claims without it actually being reviewed by the FDA. That's uh, right. It's called a health claim. And uh, <laughs> But the thing is with them, they put – if you go to like a monster energy drink, there's a lot of other chemicals in this. This has a lot, it's a lot more refined and basic. And the big thing for me is it tastes so much better than the okay. uh, other products out there. So that, that that's, that's enough for me. And if you look at the back of it, want... it says gluten-free, kosher, non-GMO, no aspartame, no high fructose corn syrup, no preservatives, yeah. no artificial colors or flavors. And it still tastes good. Go. I would think that it's the burns body fat because that's who we are in America, right? Like we're looking to drink a drink to burn body yep. fat. Like we're, we're looking to drink a drink. Oh, I can drink and get thin. That's who we are in America, right? Yep. Also gotta certified vegan. I think they're just throwing <laughs> a broad net and they're getting all these different groups. I, I did not, not work for Celsius. Yeah. <laughs> not you know, but that's like Celsius. Celsius. But look at CMG. Let's like go, you can make the same. Chart. Well, you can look at the chart. CMG and, and come with the no, same. I, I will in a second, but the same approach. Like Chipotle, a lot of people can't believe that Chipotle is a fifteen hundred dollars stock, and it's had this. I mean, just monster move. But it's that whole um, whether you believe it or not, or buy into it or not, that uh, it's healthier, not cal. cal Donny, Danny, help me out here. Calorically, that's what I wanted Caloric. to say. Calorically. Caloric. Caloric. Caloric, not calorically. I don't sure? think so, Don. Calorically, uh, can we go? Oh, we stumped. You know Don. what? People know. People wow. know what you're calorically. I, I, I'm. I, I'm gonna. We'll have to go to the judges. <laughs> calorically, like I don't think Chipotle is. Chipotle is not a the judge. Diet says food. it's okay. No, well, <laughs> calorically, it's okay. that must be it then. Yeah, yeah. Like it, it, Chipotle. I mean, people people get fat on Chipotle. But it's supposedly without the preservatives. They've got a clean uh, menu. And and just look at the chart. And then you're saying that this CELH is of yeah, the you don't same get, You don't milk. get fat on with a Chipotle if you wash it down with a Celsius. They offset each other. <laughs> oh, is that the counter? Is that, is that the dream yeah. meal? Yep. DMG. That's, that's, that's the go. key. The dream meal. The American that's, dream. That is... Wow. Uh, wait till they start. Wait till they do the integration, right? They get Celsius on the uh, on the fountain at Chipotle. Yep. Oh, they Chipotle. can infuse go, the rice with it. Soak the rice in. That's right. No, they've got the cauliflower <laughs> rice, Danny, at Chipotle. They can't keep it in stock, by the way. The the Chipotles by my house uh, keep running out of it. And so they why they, it's People it's like demand one of the, or they can't get cauliflower. The, oh, I I just assumed and assumes a dangerous word. Great question, Alex. Uh, I just assumed it was demand, mm -hmm. but you know with uh, today's Today's um, shortages of everything, um, but it's also I got wonder, that keto or, slant. I think it's because yeah. people are doing it because they it's a quote healthier way to eat. That's yep, you'll, you'll, you'll pay burritos. a premium. Big burritos. You'll pay a you'll pay a premium for it. All right, so let me show you this. Uh, we'll do something for the traders that watch the show, and then we'll do something uh, more for the investors that go a little bit slower uh, that watch the show. So the tick fade trade. So uh, let me show you the ticks. So the ticks are. Uh, it's the buying and selling that comes right off the New York Stock Exchange. And so I've got this on a five-minute chart. You can put it on a minute chart. Up to you how you do it. I measure it like this. A thousand, uh, to the downside, a thousand to the upside. Anything at plus 800, minus 800, that's real buying or selling. Uh, like like think uh, institutional type people just either buying or, or, or selling. When you start getting these uh, big, massive ticks, and let me show you. Uh, like this one isn't that big. The, the the recent low here, to give you an example, this week was only nine forty two. Like 
think about this. We haven't had a minus. It's four days into the trading week. We haven't had any selling. Like it's only been minus nine forty two. If you go back uh, for the year, right? Just put it on a daily chart. You'll see that the low tick of the year back in back in June on June tenth. Uh, excuse me, that's last year. It, let's go five ten. Five ten was minus seventeen hundred. Real selling. Look at what the market was doing on those particular days. Minus uh, sixteen seventy there. And you can see in uh, earlier this, oh, we're in July 1st here. So earlier, about two weeks ago, it was minus uh, 1,200 was the low. But if you're looking to not get caught, so uh, people will uh, smuggingly, smuggingly, Danny, just give me a yes or no on that. I don't think that's a word, though. Smuggingly. 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 Smuggingly, the way you say that? Yeah. Smuggly. So really, like, you're smuggly? I think that's one of the Muppets. Oh, I don't. <laughs> yes. That Hank's right. That because it's Beaker and Bunsen smugly. Uh, people will smugly say, uh, well, the first hour of trade is average hour. And there, there's got to be, instead of just platitudes, there's got to be a way to look at that factually. And I look at it through the ticks. And so the ticks here uh, reached just over, they reached up here to plus 1,200. Like it was all this pent up buying coming into the market the moment it opened there was so much overnight order flow meaning people are at home they're putting in their orders and plus it's the first of the month and there's a ton of uh uh institutional type money that comes to work the first several days uh, of the month and so you have all this buying but you, you want to be careful about trying to buy those first ticks because typically when you come up this high stock earnings market levers on the tick reading right at the open it's uh, you've kind of shot um Danny, what's a different way to say, uh, sh well, no, I'll say it this way. I just thought of it. You've kind of shot all your bullets. Mm -hmm. So you have no more bullets left in the chamber and you've kind of got a reset. And so we'll leave it on the same five minute chart and we'll just put in here like the NQ. And you can see here, uh, let's get Thursday, excuse me, as I zoom in here. So here is Thursday at eight o'clock. Here's just about 8.30. You reach up. So you reach up right here towards the open, you're matching the ticks, and then you can see the fade. And so you can do that with all the indices, but it, it, you don't have to play it. You just have to know it. And so what happens is a lot of uh, individual investors and a lot of individual traders will get caught up in that, meaning they'll want to participate in that initial move. And if that initial move is explosive to the upside or the downside you can get a fade in either direction and today was kind of one of those uh classic moments that did that i saw it and i thought and i've been doing that for years I, sometimes i fade it uh sometimes i if i'm paying attention sometimes i don't um when i see it like that but just just the thought uh going into it so let's do this danny i don't have a good transition um for the next for the next segment so can you give me something yeah let's go to the next segment who who who, who are we talking to don really? or alex or dan? <laughs> that was yeah. lovely dan nobody ever could have come up with a better transition than that Perfect. and you definitely went to the right guy i just i just go straight i just go straight to it man just just get right that was legendary I've got, um, well, Dan, that, that'll take me to this. So I think uh, what to watch here these first couple of days is is growth. And what I was going to allude to, and then we'll get to Don, because I believe Don will have uh, some interesting things to say about this. So let's look at the dollar real quick, Stockner. So look at DXY. So the dollar is taken out. We're on a daily chart now. So what I find fascinating about the dollar, it used to be that if the dollar was creeping up here um, to this ATR, uh, you know, the dollar was going up, growth was having some trouble. And that's, that's not the case because the dollar, now the dollar struggled, uh, growth struggled mid-month at quarterly uh, or options expiration and what could be deemed as rebalancing. But look at here, the dollar hits the third ATR, pulls back, growth has been doing just fine. And I don't see growth as being really in trouble here as the dollar takes out that 618 high that it made uh, just very recently. And it used to be that if you saw this dollar creeping higher, that would be bad uh, or negative for the growth stocks. But what I do think is very interesting is the NQ here, where it's at. And it, it might not have anything to do with the dollar. 
the, the, the market will look for the reason why, I meaning the, the media will look for when price does X, what's happening in the news, and can we time together and give you a reason? But I think it's just normal ebbs and flows. And so when you see on these ATR charts that, that I, I've been using for ever and a day, when you get, here's back in August of 2020, which was just a magical month. Um, when you see you're getting closer to that third ATR, Every day you spend up near it or above it, you're you're that much closer to having some kind of pullback, and it's not not uh, it's not uh, I don't have a better phrase than say Don pulling out the bear. It's just natural ebbs and flow. Don pulling out the bear could be interpreted as many different things. We'll just note that as a that, phrase. That really could. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't mean Don pulling out the bear. Throw uh, a few but, other prepositions in there, and uh, uh, you know, it just could really. And this so you wheels. get you get this plus two ATR and this plus three ATR. Every day you spend at you know plus two ATR and above three ATR, it just increases your pull, your chances of a pullback, say to the mean, which uh, is that dotted blue line where I keep writing the letter M on it. And so right now you are at three ATR on on the NQs, and so um, I don't know if there's a and Don probably has a number where it's x percentage above the 21 because i find it to be inconsistent but uh and i only measure from the 21 and i think don measures from the 50 day when you're when if you're looking to say the market is stretched you need some kind of um like factual way to say that so whether you say it's a percentage above the 50 day and that typically triggers some kind of momentary pause or as i do the third atr Right now, uh, this is the, what if you're a growth investor, what you want to see is this market just kind of pause, let these ATRs, let the let the moving averages catch up, and then and then assert themselves in a little bit. The dollar, though, is interesting here because the dollar has been asserting itself and it's had no effect on growth. And so, uh, what you don't want to be, or what I don't want to be, is um, a an apologist for any theory. We're, we're a stock apologist. Like, this stock should be going higher, but it's not. And it's because people underappreciate that's a stock apologist. You don't want to be a market apologist. What you want to note is abnormalities. And right now, it is abnormal, and it's been abnormal. It's not in the case that the dollar has asserted itself and growth has just been clickety clack down the tracks. But that is exactly what's happened. And you want to acknowledge that. And then, in the same breath, look at the dollar here. The dollar is at the third ATR. So if I bring to you every week that um, the th you know when you get to that second and third ATR you're looking for a pullback, if that's the case, that doesn't change just because I switched it to a chart of the dollar. And so if we're at this third ATR and 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 I just you know have been telling you that the relationship is dollar kind of pulling back, growth is strong. I would think that growth gets even stronger if the dollar. Uh, if the dollar pulls back. And so, Don, I wanted to get your thoughts on that. Alex or Hunter, if you had any thoughts on that, it'd be fantastic. Yeah, the the, the um, measuring stick that I use is if you get 5% above the 50-day moving average on the NASDAQ 100, that's considered a yellow light. If you get 6%, I would consider that a red light. You really do not want to be adding to growth. Uh, slow down Can we pause there for a second? I know some people take notes on the show. That's not me being facetious. So you're saying if you get 5% above the 50-day, is that right? Yeah, on that's kind of like a yellow light, and then 6% is a red light. Um, okay. And we so right actually, now, would ref we reflect that, yeah, we would reflect that on the, um, the trend gauge that we use in the videos at night also. Okay. So we're and right for at the, the S &P 5%, right? Yeah. Yeah. So the S and P yes on the Nasdaq 100. The S and P 500 is closer to four percent for a yellow light, five percent. Yeah, and so those are I the guess two. That's those the are the two that I've tracked. Yeah. Yeah, and so and, and you know the, that the, sometimes it's, you know you don't have to be bearish to not be bullish. Uh, and there's there's times to let off the gas, and this yeah. is honestly one of those times from if you're if you're trafficking in tech stocks, and they really do need to put in a lot of the leaders haven't broken their ADMA in weeks. They need a little bit of a sideways to down action. We've seen that over the last three days in the leaders. For example, pull up uh, CrowdStrike is a good example. CRWD, 
hasn't broken the ADMA uh, right. in in weeks. Today, pierced it, closed uh, right about on it. These handles are what we need. The question is, is the ADMA going to stop? Uh, it will today's low stop, or will it go down to what is the pink line on that screen, the twenty one, which is another uh, three and a half percent down. And that can yeah. happen without any technical damage to the stock. It's right at the top of its range. And it, it frankly, you know, it's gone sideways now for about a week and a half after a big volume moved up above 251.28, which was the breakout. And now it's just pulling back to that area. Uh, and it's entitled and, and, to take a rest as it really moved up strongly yeah. from the 204 area. And these, these is, this is what we're looking for in growth stocks over the last uh, couple of days and really in the next couple of days going forward. And this is what I want to be uh, really helpful to uh, with the people that watch the show. Because, so are you an investor or are you a trader? And um, in last night's video, I asserted, uh, the Wednesday video, I asserted that, you, by the way, all the, all the work we ever do at Revere Asset is really found under this tab, Daily Market Insight. So if we've said it, if we have a thought on the market condition, where we're at in time and space, uh, you will find all of our work here in Daily Market Insight. And you, the easiest way to go back and see how we handled any time frame, all the way back to 200, uh, excuse me, 200, 2014. We started doing videos, uh, I believe, in the spring of 2014. You can go back and see all those market conditions uh, just down here at the bottom left-hand side of your screen. And that's that we don't we don't put out brochures. We don't put out marketing. Um, we don't we don't tell you. Danny, what, what do those people do when they want to, uh, when they want to, like they weren't in a particular strategy or they weren't in a particular market, but they theorize how their strategy would have done. And then they start, they start marketing those type of results. What's that called? It just left my head. Uh, well, you've got number one, back testing where they try to back well, test yeah. the strategy, but they're also hypothetical returns. Yeah. They, that, they give you a little asterisk. About? Yeah. yeah, there's another word that you and I have made fun of. People, people will talk, will will come to the office or and with COVID and stuff. They'll send you their materials, and there was one egregious one, like like the like we returned a gazillion percent, and that kind of gets your attention sometimes. And so Danny clicks on it, and he goes, "Oh my gosh, this is just all back tested in hypotheticals, like what they would have done, like." Like they, they, they literally just described how they would have picked all the winners. But if you want to see what we're really doing in real time and space, click the Daily Market Insight tab, click the podcast tab, and you can go back and see all the shows. Uh, Zach, what is this, number 356? 356, you got it. 356. So this is the 356 weekly podcast. There are, in addition to the weekly podcast, there are five videos a week that come out of the shop. And now with Alex, uh, we have Alex. Alex, what was your bonus video about uh, last night? The bonus video that goes on YouTube and went before they even do anything on any clicking on the YouTube channel for River Asset Alex. What should they do? A like, share. Well, subscribe first. Then when you get to the video, there's a like button on the bottom, and you could also uh, set up on your phone like the little bell button. It will notify mm. you when we uh, up upload to YouTube. What is the over under that I can draw a bell? I don't think it's <laughs> that. <laughs> Not not good. Like a, that's, that's a beautiful yeah, thought. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. Remember when I tried <laughs> what I tried to draw a panther one time or I drew something oh, and then uh, it a lion or something of the sort. Yeah. yeah. It looked more like a pig yeah. or a bear. I thought you were gonna say penis because it looked like a penis. So let's just be honest. That I know was when you were like. trying to draw a car. Fred Flintstone. Oh, was that a car? You blew it, you blew it. yes. You blew yes. it. That's why we almost it's decided choice, to take your drawing tool there. away. Yeah, interesting choice of words there, Danny. Uh, so uh, when we're looking, <laughs> hey Tim, alluding we, to your we gotta, point, we though, gotta get um, a mute button and take his drawing tool away. You know what's the best part about this show, Danny? This is the Fourth of July show. It's the Big Bang show, right? There I've you got go. My, there you go. I've got my patriotic shirt on. Uh, look, wow, you can really see the. So can you I guys? Thought you, I thought he was getting tortured in North, North, North Korea. Korea. With that light in uh -oh. there, I thought he was getting tortured in oh, yeah. North uh -oh. Korea. Yeah, Tim's got it. It's fine. There I we go. got it. We're, we're fine. Our, our, it, our screen we're... capture software is doing some wacky things or whatever. It works. It's good. Fine. Uh, it works. We're yeah. fine. It's fine. So, um, look, when we're here at the third HR with crowd, uh, look, 
this is a great example of it's not what Don was saying. Look, it hit the 30 chart. That's 257 and the stock's trading 251. Clearly not the end of the world. A move to the 21 or the mean of the stock here is 239. But, uh, but what I was alluding to earlier is I haven't met the investor that if you gave them a choice, I haven't, oh boy, I don't know what I'm doing that I'm doing that, but I won't do it anymore, fellas. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't oh, met, I don't know what I'm touching that's causing that, but I won't do it anymore. Uh, I haven't met the trader that says, hey, would you, would you like a 10% gain, 20% gain, or would you like that 4% gain to flat? Uh, and then reload. And everyone always, and I'm not being facetious, I spoke to a ton of people for a number of years at IBD. And everybody, of course, wants the gains. And so this is a way to just help you trail up stops when you're when you're using, whether you're using Don's uh, metric of X amount of percent over the 21, hey, I want to get my three bar trailing stop in place, whatever it is that you use to proactively harvest some gains and there's like a gazillion ways to do this right okay we got to the second third hr maybe i'll sell 75 percent and i'll let the other 25 percent run because you don't know how it's going to behave it could, what if it went up to just keep going right and then you're trailing to stop and so there's a number of things that you can do at home that i think are really proactive to help you and i think this is the perfect market to actually uh take 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 some time to practice that because i Don identified it. The the Nasdaq here is a little bit uh, stretched, and so what I don't think is going to happen. I'd be surprised if the market just sold off here. I mean, based on how the markets behaved the last uh, two weeks of June, I, I'd be really surprised uh, if the market sold off. But what you don't want to be is a bag holder. Get the bear ready, Don. And so, <laughs> bears always. And so win. what I it's where you're keeping the bear that's concerning so he's smarter uh, than the average bear <laughs> so what what you're seeing here like uh i did this last night but i i think it bears repeating because there'll be a group of stocks that are talked about tremendously and then uh this month i don't know what they're going to be but they're going to be sold to you on uh tv or uh whatever media sources you go to as the stocks to be in and I just want to show you the travel stocks because I traveled up here to Pennsylvania. Uh, I am in uh, I'm in Pennsylvania right now. And I, I was telling Danny and Don, the airport was overwhelmed. Where we left at uh, was absolutely positively overwhelmed. They could not handle the volume of traffic. Flights are getting canceled because they can't find workers. Danny, I don't know if you saw in Dallas, American Airlines has asked their corporate staff to come into DFW to, um, to work. Out. Yeah, uh, that's no joke. Uh, I flew Southwest. Dallas Love Field at 4.30 in the morning uh, was overrun. They just didn't have enough people to work. And it, it, and so it's interesting. Like, that is a tremendous demand capture. Like, oh, my gosh, all these people want to travel. You've seen the orders come in to, from American Airlines, excuse me, from uh, Southwest and United Airlines and the Boeing and the Airbus. We need more planes. We're forecasting more demand. But look at the look at the look at what's been happening with this American Airlines stock. This this isn't a leading stock right here. And then if you look at UAL, we can. Th this isn't a leading stock. Let's look at uh, Love uh, Southwest. This isn't a leading stock. Um, give me a Ryanair R Y A Y. Uh, that's not a leading stock. Save. Yes. Yeah is not a leading stock. Hey, what's Allegiant? Is Allegiant just A? Uh, Allegiant? No, it's not. What's the one out of Las Vegas? The one. Thank you. Oh, that's, the, that's not, that's not a leading stock. And so, but you don't hear anything right now, but it's time to get these stocks because travel is hot, travel is hot, travel is hot. And it's almost as if that the people that are telling you this, they've got the merchandise to sell you. They already wrote it up. And they're trying to give it to you because you'll be the bag holder. You'll be the one left holding the bag. There's already a group of traders, I believe, because a couple have written to me, left holding the bag. I believe automobiles are at that point right now. But hear me out before I show you the charts. So, And I, and I do want to get your opinion on this, fellas, because um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how this plays out. I know a couple of people that work for Ford up in Detroit that listen to the show. So maybe they can chime in here if they want to write. If you want to get a hold of anyone, by the way, Stock Nerds Market Lovers, just contact us right here. Here's all of our information. Tim Rivera said, Don, Alex, Hunter, 
America's fiduciary, Danny, the easiest thing to do is call 855-732-5932. So the car lots have cars stacked in them right now because of the chip shortage. I have that correct, Don? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Confidence. Well, no, no, no. I mean, maybe it cleared out. I'm not being facetious here. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Um, okay. So if, if they're stacked up with 2021s, when do they introduce the 2022s? Is there going to be a car glut? Like, like we have none right now, by the way, running a car was really painful. Like there's no cars to be rented in, we flew into Baltimore to get up here. And for Hertz, if you had a Hertz reservation, which we didn't, we had Avis. If you had a Hertz reservation, it was a two hour wait for a car, even with your reservation. Oh. For Avis, we got one of the last minivans on the whole lot because they didn't have any. So when you're looking at, uh, let's look at Ford. So Ford right now is at the 21 exponential moving average, right? So it's found support here multiple times, but is Ford about to do, are the car stocks about to do what the travel stocks did? And meaning that they're hyped up, there's shortages, car prices are at all time highs. And are the manufacturers about to pull what the airlines did, which you could say, well, Tim, that's an overall transport issue, Tim. That's uh, that's the ETFification of the markets. You can go IYT uh, and you can say, well, Tim, IYT is not having that great of a time, even though it's really not that far off of old highs. But are there going to be a bunch of bag holders in a General Motors, in a Ford? What's Tesla doing today? TSLA in a Tesla. In a, what's Volkswagen? VWAGY in Volkswagen. Uh, Toyota is uh, TM. Are there about to be a bunch of bag holders in the automobiles? And I wonder, and this is all theory, right? This ain't going to help anybody. I wonder if it's all because of the upcoming glut. What are they going to do with all those cars, Danny, that are stacked up waiting for chips? Are they not going to make 2022s? Are they just going to delay the model years and call 2021s 2022s? <laughs> just change the no, placard. Beef is a, they'll, they'll just change the placard. Well, <laughs> can you do that? I don't. Can you, can, <laughs> there, there's some legality with just changing the sticker in a car. I know that. So, like, but it makes me wonder, like, what are they going to is this are these charts about to because the market's a forward-looking vehicle by six to eight months and so what are these what are these particular charts are they just pausing and refreshing or are they telling you like there's a you know how danny what's the best way or don what's the best way to phrase a yogi bearism like not yogi got me thinking yogi bear yogi bear from the yankees <laughs> he used to say, <laughs> he used to say something that uh that was uh, a little bit backwards like god he said a lot of things backwards. Uh, nobody goes anymore there anymore. It's too crowded is my favorite. That's the perfect one. So when you come no, to a fork like, in the road, hear, take it. The one about the crowded, I think, works the best here. Because if you hear all these travel, these horror travel stories, does it prevent you from going? No. I, I, I don't know. think so. I'm going to travel. I, 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 I'm, I flew with I my family. Go. Yeah, no. Everyone's I, been cooped up every, for a year, you know. Everybody so. I know is traveling, and yet, yep. why, why, did, why did these prices reflect this? And I, and I think though, is it like Don would just uh, say almost curmudgeonly to somebody who might ask him, "Just follow the charts; it'll tell you where the leadership is." And you gotta wonder if why, why. What what's um EXPE is Expedia? Yeah, it looks yep, similar okay. to the other travel stocks. What is uh booking? Uh BKNG. BKNG. Yeah. Da -da. Okay. Uh, is Travago one TVGO? No, that's yeah, not it. What's trip, Travago? Trip is uh Trip is another one. T R I P. Yeah. Yeah. Like where are these or or? Or if you look at the Dow, right? Look at the Dow. Right? So here's YMs that are that are showing some strength here. They're not leading. They're not leading like uh, the Nasdaq and the S and P's. Here are the small caps, the Russell. Are those types of stocks just taking a pause? And you're about to go through another uh, great rotation. And what do I mean that? What I mean there is um, the market doesn't sell off. It just rotates violently. 
And so everyone got left holding the bag with those travel stocks, right? And then uh, you've got the car stocks not showing too much strength right now. But look at what Caterpillar did. Like, that's a daily chart of cat. Give me deer. Give me another industrial hunter. Throw, throw anyone at me. EA, Bowen. Hunter, I mean, Alex, give me, a, give me, give me any kind of industrial. Uh, D -D 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 DuPont. Tri Thank you. Uh, yeah, like, look at these. These, these were the leaders of 2021. And, and then ever since June, you know, there's, there's June, right? They're like, oh, they're great. They're great. They're great. They're great. They're not. And it's just a violent rotation in and out of the markets. And I think this is the quintessential moment for the average true range charts. Because we'll just leave DDD up here. I haven't looked at DDD and I don't care to tell you the last time I've ever looked at this stock. Uh, hit the third ATR in January, sniffed it in May. And then look at, look at that pullback. Uh, we looked at uh, Boeing, Hunter mentioned Boeing. Uh, I mean, you, you get some really huge plane orders, and why can't Boeing get out of its own way? So I find all of this interesting. And, and the markets are great, right? Like uh, uh, the Dow up almost 13% uh, so far this year. SPX uh, up 14.5%. The NASDAQ comp, not the NDX, which is the NASDAQ 100. The NASDAQ comp is up, what, 12.5% this year? I can't be right. Oh, I, of yeah. course that's not right. No, I, 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 I type. I type. No, it, it is. I typed in the wrong ticker symbol for the indices. I, I am not wow. sure why the comp didn't come. It used to just be comp. Did it change, Alex? In think or swim, and I don't. I'm not keeping up I with keeping up. So, guys, I I usually just use NQ um, to follow. I just use uh, NQ and NDX. I don't look at the whole comp. And you used to be able to just type in comp. And get the Nasdaq 100. We'll solve well, that. I, I haven't looked at the comp actually in a long right. time. Yeah, so I, I wonder if you're just about to experience a violent rotation. And look at Amazon. Amazon yeah. third ATR, like third ATR, zoom, third ATR, zoom. And are you about to experience? A, I don't even know if it's a rotation. It's just that's a real choppy chart, man. I don't know if it's a rotation I, so much or if it's good. Can I make a point? Can I make a point? Please. So the indexes have been isolated, especially the NASDAQ, because you have names like Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Google, all the heavyweights haven't really had a, a pullback. Meanwhile, you're having those rotations outside of that. Imagine those are in the middle and outside of it, you have industry type names and then you have growth stocks and they're going like this. While in the middle, those big mega cap tech stocks are just tracking higher. So if you're an indexer, you avoid it, that volatility. Meanwhile, there yeah. are people that are growth traders are bobbing and weaving in and out of time. Uh, so if you're an in, this is your year. About. As an indexer, this is absolutely your year, your time to shine. 100% agree with that. Uh, with that, Hunter, you want to do, do a little research? I've got a couple more things, but what do you got, buddy? Yeah, well, let me uh, let me just make one comment in relation to what we were just talking about. Um, so from about February into the middle of May, before growth stocks started to turn around, there was a handful of, of times where the value stocks or the indus or, uh, industrial type stocks paused or briefly pulled back. And it looked like growth was starting to come back a little bit. And ultimately, a lot of those occurrences they either reversed into previous uh, levels of resistance or previous uh, highs or declining moving averages. And you're starting to see that to some degree in the value plays. So like you can pull up DD, it's, it's going back to the mean or FCX has reversed into the 21 EMA twice in the last week. So mm -hmm. it almost, in my opinion, feels a little bit like the literal inverse of what we experienced throughout February to mid-May, uh, where the growth stocks are in leadership. Obviously, the NASDAQ is leading. Um, you get some some periods of pullback, which is very normal. And so the other areas that haven't been working recently start to try and make a comeback. And ultimately, a lot of those failed. Obvi you know, It's yet to be seen what's going to happen this time around. But in my opinion, there are some indicators that there's, number one, there's a lack of volume on a lot of those former leaders. And number two, they're having trouble getting through uh, moving averages or 
um, previous areas that they were able to get through. So just something that I've noticed, I think I mentioned that in a video. Uh, and like I, like I said, we'll, we'll see how that ends up playing out. Uh, but a lot of those areas still light volume, struggling to maintain strength throughout the day, that kind of stuff. So that's my only comment there. Uh, in regards to what I have today, it's pretty simple. And I'm actually I'm going to talk about these in the video tonight, which will probably be out before the podcast, I would imagine. So uh, just to focus on on leadership and really what that means is identifying what holds up the best when stocks are uh, having a tough time. And so growth stocks experience some volatility today. Um, so, Tim, if you could pull up crowd for me, C-R-W-D. That would be great. And I think it finished the day down 20 basis points, maybe less than that, 0 0.06. Um, and you just want to take note of especially names that are at or very close to all time highs that are holding up better than the majority of stocks in their style. So for for crowd, that means, you know, growth or you can compare it to uh, their peers in their in their industry group. But you want to identify those that are either green on a red day or just down a, a just a tiny bit and that are acting well while maybe other, like for example, Roku is down 5% today. It doesn't mean anything's necessarily wrong with Roku, but you just wanna note the strength in the in leaders, especially ones that are at all time highs and holding up well. So I just wanna point out CrowdStrike, DocuSign, D-O-C-U, also holding up nicely today, um, and Shopify holding up nicely as, as it's, about two or three percent from all-time highs as well it's putting in a little handle um, but those were some of the standouts in growth world that were either just slightly down came back throughout the day uh, shopify actually went green with about 10 or 15 minutes to the close and ended up finishing slightly red uh, but just just want to, to highlight that because oftentimes those that hold up the best in a strong market especially for growth end up being the leaders when things start to get going again um, on the flip side of the equation, Tim, if you'll pull up TAN for me. TAN's had a bit of a, a rough pullback the last two days, not really anything crazy by any means. You can see it was down 1% today. Uh, but basically all you've got the last two days is a pullback to the 200 day, which it pushed through on the 28th. And here we are just coming back and testing that 200 again. So in a, a sector that was very extended, possibly starting to come back to earth, as, as you mentioned and Don mentioned, um, some pullbacks as some of these things get extended, completely normal. Um, and then Don is probably gonna talk about this one more. So I just wanna, I just wanna pull up the chart. Will you pull up MSOS, Tim? And I'm only, I'm covering these two because I've been talking about solar and weed for the last couple of shows. Uh, MSOS getting its first close above the 50 in quite some time. I would be looking to see that hold tomorrow or either more strength tomorrow uh, in a sector that's been beaten up and hadn't really been able to get any leg legitimate momentum going. I don't think it's age uh, specific, but um, I, I think, I mean, screens are screens, right? Stocks turn up on screens, but I feel as though uh, this is... Um, this in particular example, as it comes up in my head, is a little too stereotypical, and I don't mean to be so heavy handed, but I think that you and Alex are able to talk about stocks that maybe some of our older um, traders or investors might not be aware of. MSOS is um, one of those areas, I think like DraftKings, I think what you bring to Penn, I think that discussion around younger stocks like a Celsius, I th that's why I did that at the beginning of the show. One, Don had um, Don had that koozie uh, that, um, that that koozie thing going on there, but it's interesting because I don't know <laughs> if uh, I don't know if maybe some of our uh, seasoned listeners or maybe they're not paying attention. They're just not in with the zeitgeist. Like when you look at a CEL, it's like, well, well what makes that so special? It's just a drink, right? And being able to talk about um, maybe Don would call that the new. Um, and, and, and someone cynical Certainly, out there yeah. might say, isn't that just monster repackaged as a different product with some different verbiage on it? But when you understand the move, the, the monster move, that monster, and then as to the monster move that monster had, you know, just for so many years, then it becomes interesting to you. Right. And you might, when you go to Costco, 
pay attention because when, when I go to Costco, they're selling a ton of cases of this. I don't drink it. Doesn't doesn't mean they don't sell a ton of cases of this. Hey, what's the um they kind of he's they kind of got an offbeat founder. I got darn it, Danny. I drink their uh, Lacroix. What's Lacroix's ticker? It's Fizz, right? F I Z Z. Like look look at that chart of Fizz. Yeah, I mean you've got that big uh, spike up to a hundred there, but and I believe this is also okay. I don't know how it goes yeah, that's, negative. That there, spike but, up uh, reflects what people think it tastes like, and then where it is now is what it. <laughs> Right, and so Don makes the Don makes the point that I'm going after. I'll tell you what, Don. It's easy to get you to where I need you to go, and I appreciate your flexibility. Um, you might not like it, but you'd like you'd like gains from a dollar, you know, to trading forty five right now, or maybe you know, maybe you cash out higher. But you might not drink C E L H, and you might not drink M N S T, you know. But you'd like the gains. You can drink those gains and whatever it is that you do drink. Like what's the ticker? So like what's Bud? Or Bud B U D. Look at Bud. Do you want Bud, or would you rather have that C E L H? Now I think Sam Adams is a different story. Why would Sam Adams be a different story? It's the they have one of the highest selling uh, volumes of um, what's their Kate Hunter Alex. Do you guys know what their competitor to White Claw is? It's a, it's a Thank seltzer. You. I think they're it's a clear I think they're truly truly truly. I think yep, it's truly. It, I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, and so Sam Adams has the trend. And you might not drink, you know, so you might not even know Sam Adams made it, but you might not be interested in that at all. But they're capturing the zeitgeist of what's happening in the market space right now. And it's no, this is exactly why I started out the show like this. It's no different than CMG. It's no different than any other stock that's capturing the hearts and minds of where people want to be. And so people want to eat cleaner. So they're going to, it doesn't mean it's better for them calorically, Chipotle. Doesn't mean CELH is going to make them any healthier. Quite sure there'll be a study. Like, how many times do you guys remember how many times people would come out with a study with what was ever in Monster? And it was usually some short seller that was going to kill people. And uh, yep. Monster's still there. And then MNST. And so you, you don't, just because it's not your taste. You know, be it a pot stock, uh, be it uh, one of these gambling type stocks that we talk about, doesn't mean you shouldn't have your ear to the ground. And I think Hunter and Alex, in a long-winded way of saying this, bring a tremendous amount of value to what we're doing here because I think their perspective is uh, much different than mine, much different than Don's, and nobody has the perspective Danny has. So um, I, I appreciate that all very much <laughs> thank you zach that was the nicest way to say danny's one of a kind when he drives are you the saying they're a lot the younger than us tim is that what you're saying they're a lot younger than us yeah but yeah but <laughs> but youth in this regard like the saying that youth is i really look i look red here i look donald trump orange you, you I, look you look like you're Jesus. getting you're in a, a north korean torture chamber or you're it's under a sun lamp i i can I'm not making this up. I'm home at my parents' house, and I love I love my parents dearly. I really do. Um, but my dad had me hook up three. I'm not making this up. Three different printers because in case one breaks, we wanted two backups. There's this interrogation light above his little workstation. It looks here. better without the it, light. I, well, thank you, Danny. I thought the same thing about you for years, but I've been no, really, it looks good. It yet. looks really good without the light. It's perfect. Um, yeah, no, I like the saying is that youth is. Yeah, yeah. can we just start the podcast over now? It's <laughs> yeah, <much> better. <laughs> yeah, right like when they say that youth is wasted on the young, I don't think that to be the case in this regard because they're they're not just telling you about some hot stock, right? This isn't like they're not they're not flooding you with redditism. They're they're that's a word. They're they're actually <laughs> giving you thoughtful analysis. Of something that's trending, and I think it was Alex that brought up CELH. Was it you, Alex, that did that? Yeah. Problem is, I can't see my notes now. Um, anyway, which speaking of Alex, Alex, what you got this week, man? Yeah. So, alluding to that point before, we were talking about uh, things being crowded. So, uh, something I'm trying to I, I can't measure this because it's hard to measure if people are talking about or or buying the same stock. Cause I don't have that technology like, like Citadel does, but uh, I'm following stocks that are generally not as popular that are 
hitting new highs or breaking out. And two of them are in the medical device equipment space, uh, PKI mm -hmm. and TMO. Thermo Fisher. Let me get this so on these the two stocks. Again. Yeah. What is PKI? These are names. I've not heard of PKI. It, they build uh, spectrometers, same company as TMO, a bunch of devices for laboratory and gotcha. uh, no in the medical space. Yep. And TMO. Gotcha. So the these two stocks are names you may want to add to your watch list. They're extended. Um, again, just like I said in the YouTube video last night, if there's a name that you, you miss, wait for a pullback because no stock goes up straight and you'll, you'll get an opportunity to get in and, and, and buy some. Um, so yeah, there's the bonus stock video from last night. I, actually, the bonus stock I'll give I'll give it away right now. It was Celsius, and it's funny because okay. I talked about in the video. Wait for that pullback today. It pulled back. Is it enough? I don't know. Um, use that pivot that I talked about in the video. If you want to know the pivot, I, watch the video, and uh, you'll you'll perfect. find out what that pivot was. So, Let's give a kudos here a to, uh, to oh you got it, buddy. Let's give a kudos to Zach. So. We're going to get better. So as we build out our new website and we build out our YouTube channel, uh, all these, Danny's doing this, and it, it's thank you for doing it. Uh, but we're going to get different placards for all the different videos that we post here. These placards for the podcast are all our wonderful producer, uh, Zach. Uh, Thanks. He captures the moment, and he really does a great job with it. And um, huge, huge thank you to him for doing that. So then that brings, so Alex <laughs> has the video, excuse me, Hunter has the video tonight. And so I didn't. Danny, I, I, I promised I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I what was laughing because he was talking about those custom placards, and I was thinking of a, a, a placard of Tim underneath that hot lamp. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid. Like I, we, we don't choose it. So here's here, here's how that works. Zach does it. He doesn't ask for any input. We don't give him any input. Like I think people work best with free reign, meaning you don't. Hey, what are you looking for? And then just let them create. Creatives create. I believe in letting creatives create. And so it's very um, patriotic yeah. into the Fourth of July. I like that. Well, that's the, the look. That's how people. That's like when we produced your segment for the YouTube video last week on the show. Like just <laughs> on the it. fly. Like, I don't. Yeah. I, yeah like, like yeah, that's true. Do it. Like produce some content, <laughs> and then well, that's the whole way. Like if you just keep producing content that's helpful to people, people will roll right into you, and the content gets sharper and sharper and sharper. And then you know you're helping people. Like there's a gazillion people in this world that say they want to change the world, they want to help people. But I can tell you that the way to do it is absolutely make a difference in one person's life. And there's content that you created last night with this Alex the Greek bonus video. Did you you didn't call yourself Alex the Greek? That was Danny, wasn't? That sounds like a Dannyism. I'm using uh, it now. It's the intro to the tagline. He um, likes it. I he guess likes it. I likes fair enough. So, but <laughs> you're going to help somebody with that, and they're going to. And the moment you help somebody with that, it changes everything and your content gets better and you let creatives create. So speaking of creatives creating, uh, we're going to go here to Daily Market Insight. Al Hunter has the video tonight. Don on Friday, July 2nd, has the 21 over 21, the dirty 30. Can you give me a preview of that? Is it too early, Don? Uh, there are... Um... There actually could, again, for the second week in a row, be no changes to the 21 over 21, which means everything last Friday that was above the 21 is still above it this Friday. And I think that talks to the strength in the market. Uh, actually, Novacure is the only one. NVCR, they got hit on a bad phase two today. So that one uh, would be coming off of it. But um, Stocks are strong. They're, uh, the inflection point that we had with the Fed that prompted the very harsh two-day sell-off in industrials, financials, and basic material stocks, those appear to have been bottomed, and some of them are starting to uh, come up the right side of what would be a base. Stocks have to base. Uh, at, at nothing goes straight up. Stocks have to base uh, in order to shake out weak holders, bring in strong holders, and separate the wheat from the chaff. I mean, how many? How many? Um, uh, how many sayings could I apply to that? I think I just threw quite a few out there, but uh, things are. <laughs> what is the champ of the wheat? Is the is <laughs> the, the champ the, the stalk? Hunter, Alex, the chaff is the stuff you get, don't. I, want. I got no clue. I think Dan would know. <laughs> Dan, you have the answer. Danny, what is Dan's the close to the you, want, you want you want the wheat, the part you eat, the flour. You want the the main part of the thing. The chaff is the 
stuff you throw away. It's no good. Like the bad part of so the chaff and uh, there's a, there's chaff that you throw out from there's explosive incendiary devices inside of um, uh, these pods on the side of a helicopter or a jet have them too, where they they disperse what's called known as chaff, and that chaff is made up of different materials to uh, scatter huh. radar signals. Or oh, yeah, oh yeah, different types of chaff out there, buddy. Absolutely. Oh. Don, I'm sorry, I distracted no, you no. with uh, chaff. I'm guessing nonsense. that part what of it is, is useless, right? That part of it is useless yes, that you yes. just referred to, too. So, yep, yeah. yep. There we go. All right. Now well, that everybody well, knows what chaff that. is. Yeah. So you're saying that? Uh, how hard is it to do a video when nothing changes? Uh, not hard at all, because it there's always lessons to be learned. In this case, the the takeaway is what is what was strong is staying strong. And um, that's uh, that eases our life somehow. It's it's when you get this vicious, vicious rotation and you get uh, half of the stocks coming off of the list and a, and a new set coming on, and then the challenge is not to get them when they're too extended. But um, we we always make sure we've got at least 10, uh, 10 to fourteen sectors in there, and usually eighteen to twenty one industry groups. That's how you get your diversification is by. Uh, is by dividing things up across there. You don't necessarily have to have gold and real estate and foreign okay. bonds. Um, Got it. But stick with, identify um, the market, get the leading sectors, get the leading stocks within those sectors, and stick with them as long as they're uh, acting well. Is is really an oversimplification of it, but that's what it comes down to. There's a lot of uh, art that goes into it. All right, Daniel, Daniel, Daniel. Will you do me a favor? Give us the normal outro, and then I've got two. <laughs> One last things. All right, folks, if you like what you heard, please tell a friend, tell a neighbor, just send them to revereasset.com. They can sign up for our daily market insight. We won't spam them. We won't hound them in any way. It's up for them to reach out to us if they want have any questions or comments or simply want a portfolio review. You can email any of us at dan at revereasset.com, don at revereasset, tim, hunter, or alex at revereasset.com. You can also check us out on our YouTube channel, just Revere Asset. You can find out all of our work. You can always call us old school at 855 Real Wealth. All right, uh, Dan, uh, Danny, uh, keep your ears on because I'm going to bring you into the fold here for uh, something that I, th I think is interesting and we'll see how it plays out uh, in the second half of this year. So uh, real quick, uh, IPO club. Uh, it's interesting. There's an IPO club uh, among stock nerds and market lovers. Like we're a community here. So the whole, the whole business at Revere was built around cultivating the community of like-minded individuals who wanted to succeed, succeed on fact-based information and transparency. And our whole model is giving away what we're, our research to help you become a better individual investor. And um, knowing that you would send, eventually send your your loved ones and the people that you cared most about in your world to us and by the way uh it's a long weekend coming up so markets are closed monday july 5th the easiest and daniel danny answers the phones here like that's no some people go well don't you have a secretary to do that and that's so by the way uh, that's so uh 1960s uh we answer our own phones because you're talking to the strategists like you call go ahead and call tia craft go ahead and call fidelity this weekend call schwab and ask them to talk about whatever they have you in. Okay, call your person. And what you get is plausible deniability, right? Because they have you in a bunch of mutual funds, you're in a 60-40 portfolio. Don, can you go over in your video Friday, maybe the the, the dangers or the uh, the burdens of a 60-40 portfolio? I think that'd be interesting um, on on Friday if you can fit it in. Um, sure. I mean, there's a lot. really there's, yeah. Yeah, just take a look back to a 34% loss in the S&P. Uh, in five yeah. weeks in COVID, and and how yeah. bonds have underperformed, you know, why be in an asset mm -hmm. class is going to drag you down. Mm -hmm. Well, we, and, and Don just gave you that answer, but when you call your person or your family member calls their person, and they can't, you know, talk to anybody, when you call us on Saturday, or Monday, July fifth, when the markets are closed, or Sunday, eight five five seven three two fifty nine thirty two, you're going to get this guy right here, and you want to talk shop whether you're a client or not. We're going to help you answer your questions and we're going to get you on your way. We're not going to spam you. You're not some vicious sales loop. It's it's a real big differentiator in what we do uh, here. And I want and so I was talking IPO club for a second. There's a couple stock in market that was just run with the research and it's really cool to see. And they're finding success. And I was talking with them this week. And uh, one of them, Mark from Buffalo, Captain Dan, and a couple others have joined the group. And one of and I believe it was Mark from Buffalo said, you know, 
Uh, there's other stocks to trade out there, but this IPO list has focused my attention so much that I, I think he's finding more success in the markets than he's ever found. And that makes my heart warm. Like people take our work, they take Don's work, they take what Alex and Hunter's talking about, and they find ways to make it work for them. And I think that's a beautiful thing. And look, you want to get introduced to these people, Tim at RevereAsset.com is, is uh, it'd be my pleasure to do so. But Danny, there's something I want to show you on the, you can see, can you can see the screens, right, Danny? Yes. So this is the TNX. This is a 10 year treasury. 10 year treasury is at one. How you read this chart? It's at 1.48. And so what I find interesting here is uh, you're at support. You're like at long, I don't know about long term, but you're at 2121 support. So uh, TNX comes down sometimes to this third ATR, the zone of the third ATR. And and it holds, and it's been holding this end of February area here for a while now. And if the TNX goes higher, Dan, if the ten-year notes go higher, meaning interest rates are going higher, what does that mean for servicing debt, Daniel? And I'm talking about credit card debt in particular. What would that mean to a consumer if the interest rates go higher? How would that affect them personally? It makes debt. Go high, get makes your interest expense go higher, makes your interest rates go higher, no matter what it is. Credit card debt, a new mortgage, trying to refinance an old mortgage, cost the government more money. Borrowing right. costs and go so, up. It's bottom line. Right, and you can see, isn't it interesting that Mastercard, uh, Visa, Amex, Am yeah, pardon me. What is Amex? Why Amex? Have I screwed a up? What is Amex, please? AX, AXP. AXP, yeah. Thank you. Those AMX, look good. AMEX. A bunch sense. of good-looking charts out there in the marketplace. But a high, higher interest rates help a bunch of people in this market and their banks and their credit cards. But it hurts. It hurts a bunch of people. Who does it hurt? It hurts you, the consumer at home. What's the consumer ETF? What's the way? And it's, it's, it's really skewed because it's all Amazon. What is that? Uh, it just left my head. Consumer XLY. discretionary ETF? Yeah. Yeah. What? I'm sorry? XLY. XLY. That's it. That's close to all time highs, but where is it at? It's, at, it's close to the third ATR. XLY, consumer discretionary stocks, indices, metals, bonds, they don't, they don't give away to the laws of probabilities. They don't. They don't, like you can say, well, Tim, look over here at this chart last August. They just went up, up, up. And they gave it all back, right? And so where are you at? Like, look at, we can just tick this off together. So when you're, when you're coming here and you're saying, well, where are we at consumer discretion wise? Third ATR, pull back. There's the second ATR. I got a big pull back. Third ATR, pull back. You're in that zone of the third ATR. I think you really want to watch the TNX right here. And it's going to have, it's, the dollar's going to play into all this as well. But if the TNX actually rebounds a little bit, that's going to squeeze consumers when inflation is already squeezing them, right? Or the perception of inflation, because you know what broke, right? This last, these last couple of weeks. Look at that. That's lumber. See, the, you can talk that lumber is broken. You can say that copper has broken. You, you uh, give me another lumber got taken to the woodshed. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Good one, Don. There you go, Don. Um, um, that, that, Not off and koozies. Really, portfolio manager Don Vandenborn right there with the gold. Yeah, price. seriously. <laughs> tip, your, tip, your, oh, tip your service. Oh, my, my camera is falling. Here we go. So gold has broken. The metals have broken. Weather. <laughs> Where'd you guys go? <laughs> Tim's camera is broken. <laughs> All right. Tim, Tim's camera just fell off like the commodity charts. <laughs> I think we might have lost them. You know what's not broken though? Might have My lost love them. for Celsius energy drinks. <laughs> this is Bro, Grape you, Rush. We are not it's, paid it's, by Celsius yeah, for this podcast. We're not sponsored by Celsius. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe we will be. People, Don, yeah, Don people is a, think we're kidding. He's a newcomer. There he is. Tim's back there on in his hey, I'm telling you, he's in North Korea. This show's been, this show's <laughs> been tough, man. But yeah. all these things have been broken. But the problem is, are the producers going to give you the price break? The only commodities that really haven't broken are right here, and where they hit you the most. Look at crude oil, net gas. Crude look oil. at look at look at our Bob. 
uh, or, uh, these, these are the gas futures, gasoline futures. Biggest travel coming up here uh, until we get to the holidays in the winter, in the fall and the winter. Look at uh, NG, not gas. Screaming higher. Can you and pull so, PEG? Sure. Huh. So, okay. I was just curious. So the things that cost the most to consumers, the, the everyday taxes on, 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 on petroleum-based things like gasoline, they haven't broken. You think your builder or your contractor is going to give you a break on lumber? You think Home Depot? Sorry, the Home Depot is going to give you a break? You think Lowe's is going to lower their prices? If they're getting five times more than they were getting a year ago for, for a two-by-four, if, if their commodity prices go down and they can still get five times more, the newer price has been established, and that's going to go right to their bottom line. And that makes them happy as a company. I think the new pricing is here, and I think it's going to get exacerbated. Break out the bear, Don. I think it's going to get exacerbated. Break out the bear, Don. If, excess, if TNX goes higher and, and debt starts to get squeezed just a little bit, it's something to watch uh, starting now, I believe, because you fall on the support. Now where do we go from here? Danny, take us home, man. Folks, listen, have a very safe July 4th weekend. Don't drink and drive. Be safe. Have fun, but be safe. And we'll talk to you next week on your money.